Oh, that one's on too. Yeah. 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 Well, we've come out this morning, we launched off the Lula Bar. We've come about 20k out and uh, just started having a bit of a troll. Put out a bit of a variety of different sort of lures out the back, covering different herbs. And yeah, come up with the goods straight up. We've got a little Spanish mackerel, I think. Right. Lovely fish. Kicked into the next gear. You didn't want to come to the boat? How good is this? We've literally had the lures in the water for about four or five minutes. Hey guys, nice little Spanish first up this morning. We've come about 20 k's off, off of Malula Bar and um, just, just put our spread of lures out. We got a variety of lures out. Uh, we had a, a skirt, a shallow diver, and a deep diver, and all three hooked up within five minutes trolling, so we got pretty lucky. And um, yeah, we're going to keep this one for a feed. The other one went back, and um, yeah, hope you enjoy. All right, so as, you, as you've just seen, we've had a had a bit of confusion with that uh, gap shot there. I was, uh, I don't know. The skirt's actually come up above me, not here, and I couldn't, couldn't reel it back on, so I got stuck up the top of the, the top tip, and obviously I've got a pretty long leader, so poor Bobby didn't have much of a chance of gaffing her, but she just bit me off there, as Bobby went for the gaff shot, so he gaffed it in the water without, without the line attached to it, so we were pretty lucky. Right, so we're just, just turning around to go back over our mark. Um, it's always a good idea to stagger your lures uh, when you're turning around so they don't get tangled up. We've got a shallow diver on the rod on the left here. It's, um, it's out further than the one on the right, which is the deep diver. Just, uh, when the shallow diver goes out, honestly it sits higher in the water column and the line sits higher as well. So when we turn around, the line on the um, deep diver they don't cross over, and when you come up, if you've got them out the same distance, uh, they'll tangle up your line. So it's always a good idea to stay and stack it out, probably 10, 15 metres apart, and have your deep diver in closer to the boat. Nice storm. From the shallow diver. Monster spotties out here too, eh? Hey? Just back the drag off a little bit now that I've got him on a short string. I don't want to pull them hooks. They got a fairly soft mouth. Yeah, another nice, oh, nice Spanish. Oh, I love seeing them flanks led up in the water. Oh, 
awesome fish. Before, I say, you guys like you're all about. Nice work, buddy. Woo! Watch your arms on that lure. Cowcase, they're nice and long and they give you a nice big bumper zone so you don't get snipped too often. <laughs> they're slippery buggers. Another prime, sunny coast Spanish mackerel. Made a bit of a mess on the deck here too, which is not helping my cause. He's definitely slippery. Uh, yeah, beautiful fish. So we've just come out today to a spot I found a couple of years ago. Just um, I was out in my little tinny and come out on a good day. We um, had a mark uh, that someone gave me for a reef close by and I just just come out um, just exploring, just, just went in one direction and just uh, was trolling just deep diver and a shallow diver as I do. And um, yeah, come across this, this school of mackerel and ever since it's just they've just been here. I don't know why. There's we don't I actually know why they're here. Um, flat bottom, there's not a lot of bait around. Um, we're guessing it's probably a current line or something like that, but um, yeah, they just hold here and we come back every year and, and getting into a few. So yeah, even if you've got, you know, you don't need a, you don't need a big boat to get out here. Um, on a good day, you can if you've got a little 4.2 tinny with a 30 on the back would be would be enough to get out here. And um, yeah, just, just give it a go. It's, it's great fun, relatively light gear. I'm running, um, it's a Savage Gear deep diver about 25 30 foot um, they do pull a fair bit of water when they're uh, down deep so you want your drag fairly tight um, what I like to do is back my drag off a little bit once you hook up just um, stops the lure pulling out of their mouth they do have relatively soft mouth so yeah so I'm just running a um, 40 pound leader with a 30 pound braid on a 12,000 Shimano bait runner and a 8 to 10 kilo Shimano rod so, um, Relatively short, nice and stiff. It's a great trolling rod. And um, yeah, let the lure out and we'll see how we go. Oh, he's on. Double hook up. He's taking a good run, Bobby. Awesome. Oh, geez, if it's that now, it's a good one. Could be a hooey. Yeah. Geez, you have that one in before this one finishes its first run. Oh no, he's gone. That's why. <laughs> Come off your lure and jumped on mine as. Well, he's taking a bit of line.
Get sharked out here much as? Sharked, never. Awesome. <laughs> I can take me time and relax <laughs> then. Swimming to us because I'm not putting a lot of hurt on him. Just going to keep the tension on it. Ooh, little head shakes. Trying to throw the lure. Oh, he's coming up closer to the boat now. I'm expecting another run here. Here he goes. off again just a little bit there we go we've got color oh, another nice fish it's kind of a bit funny with the lure lovely work mate Awesome stuff. Another nice Spanish. Having some fun. There we have it. Another quality Sunshine Coast Spanish mackerel. Beautiful fish. I just can't can't get enough of the colours on them. I love them. Them stripes down the side. Such an awesome fish. GT racing stripes. <laughs> When purchasing the 135 off Brisbane Marine, I was able to choose the prop to suit my engine and to suit the boat to get the best out of it. So for the engine, it's between 4,800 revs and 5,300 revs. We got this perfect and the boat does a touch under 40 knots at wide open throttle. So it was really great to be able to try different props, get what you want, get it to suit your boat and then get out onto the water. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Buckle up, how was that session for Bob and Aaron? Trolling hard bodies on the mackerel, hey? Pretty, pretty exciting stuff, screaming drags, uh, some quality fish, love that sort of fishing, hey? But don't forget, you can throw a plastic at those guys as well. And uh, you would have seen plenty of photos if you've been on the TT Lures and Z-Man Facebook pages of Spanish mackerel and other mackerel species caught on plastics. Uh, trick with plastics is you definitely want your Z-Man with your 10 times tough so it can handle those toothy critters. And jerk shad profiles are, are generally the go-to for guys that want to chase a mackerel. And you may see mackerel feeding on the surface, throw a plastic in there, give it a quick wind, or you may let that plastic drop down below the school or target bait or target structure that's holding bait and fish. So lots of different ways to work that plastic. Commonly, guys will throw a five inch plastic a lot of the time, which is a good representation of bait fish around that sort of size that they're snacking on. Otherwise, they'll step up, step up to a seven inch or even an eight inch plastic for those larger Spaniards and that sort of thing that, they're, that are chopping up stuff around them and that sort of thing, they can see them working. In terms of jig heads for our plastics, one trick is, 5 inch plastic, 5 -oh hook, 7 inch plastic, 7 -oh hook, 8 inch plastic, 8 -oh hook is a, is a good starting point. And those brutally strong, 10 times tough plastics and headlocks HD jig heads are perfect for targeting those mackerel species and, and other large predators. Weight wise, 
you might go as light as a, as a half ounce when the fish are up high, and then you may want to go an ounce, ounce and a half, even two ounce on the bigger plastics when, you, when you're fishing down deeper. So keep an eye out for any fish chopping up on the surface, but also stay tuned on your sounder for bait and fish that are feeding, and maybe drop that plastic down. In terms of retrieves, you can throw that thing out and crank it fast across the surface. And this one here is a streak, so it's actually a pintail plastic. It just has a single tail. What that does is at speed, when you're cranking that lure back, that tail gets a real shimmy to it, gets a real action in the water that fish can't resist, and, and you'll find those mackerel and that will zone in on that tail. The jerk shad has a split tail, also effective, but that, um, that pintail has proven itself effective. That streaks in the bubble gum, opening night, you know, the pinks, the naturals sorts of colours are a good starting point. And you might want to throw something leery, something bright and chartreuse that stands out in the water, like a space guppy colour or something like that. So retrieve-wise, you've got that high speed across the surface. You can drop it down, let it sink down below the school and twitch and wind, twitch, 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 keep that lure moving. Otherwise, it's also effective to allow it to sink right to the bottom. So a good way to watch that is when you throw it out, and you'll watch your line cut through the water as the lure sinks, and I call it cutting a V. So if you're fishing a heavier head, you'll see it cut that V in the water as the line moves back towards you as the lure sinks, and once that V stops and the line goes slack, you're on the bottom. And that way, once it's on the bottom, you might do that fast cranking retrieve straight up, or you might wanna hop it a few times and then gun it, hop it a few more times and then gun it. If you are getting bite offs, which can happen, if the mackerel finds your line and snips you off, they, they can pretty well clean cut most monos. If you are getting bite offs, try a quicker retrieve. So get it down to the bottom again and wind it back faster without the pauses. And that can sometimes eliminate the bite offs. Otherwise you can put a little wire weed guard in there as well. A wire bite guard, sorry. So if you watch um, Tackle Tactics TV on YouTube, you'll find a video on there of Vinnie Versvelt talking about the knots and how to tie that wire bite guard just to save those bite offs. Can reduce the bites at times though, so it's a bit of a balance between using a bite guard or not. So jig head wise, as we mentioned, you know, you might go half ounce, three quarter ounce, one ounce, but there is another jig head option as well, which is effective on mackerel, and it basically blings up your plastic, and it's called a TT Lewis rev head. So it's a jig head, but it actually has a blade attached as well underneath here. In gold or silver, which is this nickel blade here, in a willow blade or in a Colorado, a, a more rounded blade. And what that does is that when you're retrieving it through the water, it just adds some flash, adds a bit of flash, adds a bit of vibration that drives those fish crazy as well. So you put that, put that on a five inch and you've got that bait fish profile, plus you've got that additional flash and vibration. So hard body is definitely effective on the mackerel, but also check out your soft plastics options for mackerel and you'll be surprised at the other species that you will catch. You can allow it to drop to the bottom and, and catch reefies. You catch tuna, catch mackerel, catch trevally, catch all different sorts of species as well. In fact, stay tuned now and check out what Bob catches when he's throwing a five inch plastic around. Buckle up.
Today's Laurent's tip is sensitivity on your sounder. A lot of people will tell you that you need to have a really clean screen so your fish will stand out. I'm, I think quite the opposite. With your sensitivity, um, the more you have it bumped up, the more you're going to get a lot more clutter on your screen, but you're going to get a lot more information, especially with your bottom um, and your fish targets as well. So even with a lot of clutter on your screen, um, your fish will still be a lot more defined and get a lot more colour in them. So for instance, if I turn my sensitivity right up, I get a lot of clutter on the screen and that's too much. So I, I always run mine on, on auto, I'll leave it on auto because it adjusts itself when you travel from different depths. So if you go from five metres down to 10 metres, it'll automatically bump your sensitivity up to get a little bit more um, information. So I, I run usually around auto plus one. Um, when the water gets a little bit dirty and you've got a lot of um, floats and stuff in the water, I'll back it down a little bit. Um, but the more you back it down, the more information you take away from not only your bait fish, um, maybe structure on the bottom, whether you, there's a wreck or trees, but your fish targets also start disappearing off the screen. So as you can see there, I bumped that sensitivity right down and um, we've lost all the information off the screen. We put it back up. You can see all the, the fish start coming back on the bottom um, and we get more definition from the um, your bottom lines as well. That's the Lawrence tip for today. Hope that helps you get more fish on the water.